Hello, it's Bill, Bill's Box of Sound, which is what you're watching right now. And uh, this is going to be a little stream of consciousness video, kind of like a recent finds of the past month or so, because it's February 10th and I haven't even recapped January yet. So those of you expecting this to be another Zappa video, it's not, but be patient. We'll, we'll get back to more of that later. Anyway, uh, yeah, stuff I've been listening to lately. Um, last thing I listened to last night was uh, this Johnny Griffin album on, uh, on Black Lion Records from 1967. This was this was uh, uh, recorded uh, in Copenhagen. It's got uh, Kenny Drew on piano, Niels Henning Orsted Pedersen on bass, and Albert Heath on drums. Uh, lots of crazy blowing from Johnny on this one. There's a number of times where the band just stops and he just keeps on going. Uh, you know, I, I, I really like Johnny Griffin's first couple of albums on Blue Note where, you know, he was just, I think it was the introducing John, Johnny Griffin and also the blowing session, which has Hank Mobley and uh, John Coltrane on it. Great stuff. So... Whenever I see a Johnny Griffin record that I don't have, I pretty much grab it right away. <clears throat> but what have I been listening to? I have been going through a lot of records that uh, that I haven't played in a very long time and uh, pulling them out and cleaning them for the first time because I've had them in my collection for decades and and playing them. Um, here's a, a good punk album, and, I, and I, I've got to cover up part of it because there's a bare breast in here. Worm. Feast. There's some guys that went on to be other groups on the on the SST label. It's uh, from the SST label. Uh, it's got Charles Dukowski in it. Who else? It's got um, engineered by Ethan James, Ed Denke, Lou Hinzo, Simon Smallwood, Chuck Dukowski, Mark, Ed, Lou, and Chuck sing Des Kadena on blues harp. Um, just, uh, some, some real good punk from the eighties. What's uh, interesting is that, uh, in the dead wax on this side one says, uh, recorded pre Frampton and the side two says rec recorded post Frampton. So that's some good primal punk for you. Um, before we continue, I need to talk about uh, a record that, that I found in my collection. Uh, I'm going to show you a little piece of video that I taped about a week or so ago. Hiya, friends. This is Bill, and you're watching Bill's Box of Sound, as usual. Getting a rare glimpse at the floor par portion of the messy room. It usually doesn't look this messy because you're usually not seeing this part, but you got records everywhere. <laughs> Stacks of CDs, a wastebasket, all sorts of crap. Anyway, I wanted to show you this. Recently, I uh, received a, a box of records, and one of them was a copy of The In Crowd by the Ramsey Lewis Trio. This came out in 1965. It was originally on the Argo label, but later on in 1965, the Argo label changed its name to the Cadet label because of a uh, classical label in the UK that called itself Argo. And um, strangely enough, I didn't have a copy of this album already. I have several other R Ramsey Lewis albums. But uh, this particular jazz album, I, uh, I pulled open to clean it so I could listen to it. And holy crap, what's this? Back in the 60s, not all records came in paper sleeves. They came in plastic sleeves. This specific record was um, pressed at the uh, Terra Hot uh, plant owned by Columbia Records. There's side one, and there is side two. And uh, the neat thing about this is that this plastic sleeve is sealed. It's never been opened. Okay. It's February, 2022. And this has not been opened since 1965. 
So let's see how clean this record is. So I'm gonna simply take this and pull it apart. If it's easy to pull apart, let's take a look at it here. Yep, here it comes. Okay, let's get this in here. Come on. Here we go. Maybe I should be using scissors to open this up, but here we go. It's open now. I'm going to be replacing this with a brand new sleeve, but uh, it's home <laughs> for over 55 years. Take a look at this record. Never been touched. Baby. Nice. So, I'll be checking this out a little bit later. Just wanted to let you folks see that uh, some records, when they first came out, did not come in those old paper sleeves. They came in plastic sleeves. Uh, it was a case with a lot of the records from the Columbia Records uh, uh, label. And uh, they also pressed for a lot of other labels, as you can see. So, that's it. Had a great time. Hope you did, too. Have a great day. Bye. So... I did go ahead and listen to that record. The only thing I used to clean it was my little carbon fiber brush. You know, just take it and uh, go along the surface and go like this and then take the dust off and then listen to it. And it was pretty damn good for a record that uh, had never been played and had been manufactured in 1965. But then I went ahead and I gave it a good cleaning, uh, a wet cleaning and used my record doctor to vacuum all the liquid off and then listen to it again. Much, much cleaner. You got to remember, record pressing plants are not clean rooms. They're dirty places full of dust. And even though the process of making a record makes something beautiful and sounds great on your turntable, it can always use a cleaning. One good cleaning before the first time you, you, you play it. And then next time you play it, you just use your carbon fiber brush, get the dust off. It'll pay you back forever. But enough of that. Um, recent gal I recently bought a new turntable. A friend of mine, his brother bought this turntable. Looks like he bought it when he was in the military uh, back in the late 70s. As a matter of fact, I uh, looked up uh, this turntable. It's a Techniques SL1900. Now, for those of you who love the uh, workhorse Techniques 1200s, you'd think, ooh, 1900, this must be a better model. Now, actually, this is kind of like a... Um, an entry level direct drive turntable uh, that does not have as strong a motor on it and uh, is a little bit more prone to uh, vibration than others. But um, for a second turntable, just when I'm listening to stuff, this is quite good. Got a, got a good value on it. And um, you know, these things usually don't bring more than a, a couple of hundred in the best possible shape. Uh, this uh, needed some cleaning up. Uh, fortunately, my friend, uh, who sold me his brother's turntable, he did some repair to the cueing motion in it, and i um, really happy that I got that. So, got two turntables in the room. It's a lot of fun. And one of the records I was playing when I was uh, kind of tweaking it is uh, I've been cleaning records that uh, I've bought out of collections lately, and... Uh, ran into some Herb Alpert records, and you're thinking, yeah, that's that's the corniest of the corny. Every day I go into Goodwill and I see lots of Herb Alpert records. You know, like, here we go. The Lonely Bull. Yep. <clears throat> and then there's Herb Alpert's Tijuana Brass, Volume 2. South of the Border. And then their big one, which uh, sold billions of billions of copies. Yes, Whipped Cream and Other Delights. This was their big hit. And, uh, you know, they went on, they had about 13 different albums on the A&M label. 
And yes, the A in A&M Records is for Herb Albert, and Jerry Moss is the other guy. But uh, you know what? I cleaned up these records because I could and listened to them. Uh, I was going back and forth uh, on, on the good uh, turntable and the new turntable. And even though these aren't, uh, you know, the most challenging music that you've ever heard, music that your parents or grandparents probably listened to, is recorded damn well. Uh, drums sound amazing, especially. So if you see those Her Herb Alpert records and they're really, really cheap, it doesn't hurt to pick them up. Check them out. Um, they could be good uh, demonstration records if the records are clean enough. Now, if they're scratched up to the point where it looks like a, a couple of uh, domestic animals have had their way with them, well, don't, don't do it. Let's see. Also going through collections that I've purchased recently. Ran into this golden earring record, To the Hilt. Now, previously, the only golden earring records I had in my collection were uh, the Moon Tan album. Oh, once again, got to cover up the bod. Don't let the uh, the YouTube police get to you. Oh, no. But uh, yeah, this is the, the, the album with Radar Love on it, Moon Tan. And uh, the other album that I had was uh, the one with Twilight Zone on it. That was cut. And... Um, you know, I had, I had never heard this To The Hilt album and uh, put it on and damn good record. And I started getting, started deep diving into Golden Earring and listened to, to those again. And went on Discogs and uh, purchased a record from 1969 by the Golden Earring. Um, <clears throat> also reading up on them, sadly, uh, the uh, the leader of the group, I believe his name is pronounced George Quimans, um, he, uh, was diagnosed with ALS and, uh, the band had to break up in 2021 after over 50 years of existence, lots of success of the Dutch band Golden Earring. But look at this, 1969, eight miles high. Yeah. They have a whole side of the bird's tune, eight miles high on here and, uh, pretty good psychedelic stuff. So I was, I've been getting into that. And, uh, also I cleaned up and listened to uh, an Altered Images album, Happy Birthday, uh, which which I had always enjoyed back in the 80s. And uh, so I started thinking, you know, there was one other tune that I liked a lot by uh, Altered Images, and that was I Could Be Happy. Didn't have that in my collection. So looked on Discogs, and lo and behold, found it. And uh, picked it up. It's called Pinky Blue. The cover's kind of beat up, but uh, the record itself was in great shape. This is a, a UK press. And uh, really strange. At the end of side one, they do a version of Neil Diamond's Song Sung Blue. For an 80s band. It just was really, really weird. But the rest of the album's okay. It's just that that Neil Diamond cover, I I don't know if I could handle that. Oh, something, a couple of new things that I bought in the month of January. This one right here, <clears throat> Main Steam Stop Valve, which is uh, Mike Watt on bass. On guitar here, we've got, da -da -da -da. haven't even memorized his name yet, uh, Mike Baguetta and uh, Stephen Hodge on drums. Uh, brand new stuff. Mike Watt, you recognize from the Minutemen, as well as Fire Hose. And uh, this is a private press album. Got number 354 out of 500. You can get it on Bandcamp. You can even listen to it on Bandcamp. Um, these guys are touring the U.S. in 2022. Um, so, you never know. I may uh, break out of the house and uh, go and see that, because... Uh, Hopefully, the trends will continue and the infections of the COVID virus will be going down even further. Another brand new album, Derek Higgins. Now, if you're a member of the vinyl community, you've probably watched Derek Vaughn's videos. Much respect to him. He 
does this music out of out of his house and for the last few years i mean he used to put out about an album every year year and a half on vinyl but um he doesn't always have the means to be able to purchase the albums and do the private press himself but fortunately he got a record company behind him and they're making this this is the second pressing of this uh sadly it's not on any colored vinyl but uh it's good music just the same this is available on Bandcamp as well. Listen to it. Check it out. There's a good chance you'll like it and you'll want to buy it. Let's see. Some jazz. Jackie Bayard. Um, I picked this up for cheap someplace and I just got around to cleaning it and listening to it. Um, Jackie Bayard plays piano mostly, but he also plays uh, sax, tenor, and alto. Uh, this has major holly on bass, tuba, and also electric bass. Um, he played uh, bass on the uh, Kenny Burrell album, uh, Midnight Blue. Warren Smith on drums, timpani, and vibraphone. And uh, there's another drummer on a couple of tunes here as well. Um, this isn't just straight blowing. The, the, this album goes through a number of different emotions and a lot of jamming, and uh, it's very entertaining. Um, the first Jackie Bayard album I was able to, to find, very, very impressed, very, very happy with this. It's on the Muse label from 1978. Yeah, 1978. And uh, Jackie even does some uh, overdubbing on a couple of tracks. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, stuff that everybody else in the world has shown already. The Art Blakey, um, and the Jazz Messenger's first flight to Tokyo. Uh, this is okay. Good performances. Sound quality isn't wonderful, but due to the quality of the performances out here, especially the two versions of Now's the Time, the old Charlie Parker tune, uh, this is worth a worth the purchase. It's it's not priced high like a tone put, but it is a two record set. Finally got a copy of John Lee Hooker, Serves You Right to Suffer. And th this is the one album that he did on the Impulse label. This finally got uh, repressed from Acoustic Sounds. This is a uh, 2 LP 45 RPM. And uh, now that I got two turntables, it's a lot easier to do the um, to listen to these because you don't have to get up every seven minutes to switch to switch the sides but the sound quality on this is unbelievable and of course getting an original of this is just about damn near impossible unless you uh unless you want to get a new mortgage on your house oh some other blue note things i've gotten recently the prophetic kirby nickels which is a compilation of two seven inchers this is fantastic. I wish they would put out uh, the album that was called Herbie Nichols Trio. That is amazing. I got a digital version of that. Um, and that's just three piece. Bass, drums, piano, and uh, Art Blakey's on drums. And uh, more Blue Note reissues. Home Cookin', The Incredible Jimmy Smith. This is one of the Jimmy Smith albums I did not have on vinyl. Very happy to get that. Kenny Burrell on guitar. And, oh yeah, this was a very welcome addition to my collection. They Might Be Giants, uh, their album from uh, 2001, Mink Car. This came out uh, right around uh, September of before the whole country got thrown into a tizzy because of 9-11. Um, <clears throat> this is a great album. Oh, uh, I don't know if they've really put out an album better than this since. Um, there's so many great tunes on this. Uh, and the design on the album cover is just wonderful. Uh, I mean, it, it, all sorts of manuals and directions for what appears to be car parts or a water bottle or something like that. And of course, it's got the, the lyrics as well. But this is the first time that this album has been released on vinyl because uh, uh, this the original uh, release of this album was on Restless Records, on CD only, and this is on pure white vinyl. Um, speaking of They Might Be Giants, let's go back here. Uh, 
they recently put out their latest album. I got this back in December, but I've been sitting on it. And it's not a bad album. Could send a few more listens before I get used to it. It's called Book. So there's just a picture of a piece of vinyl sitting someplace. And it's got, um, of course, as usual, for They Might Be Giants, a whole bunch of songs on it. And um, for those who signed up for it ahead of time, they came out with a book called Book. And the whole book is lots of pictures, art, illustrations, and it's got uh, the lyrics to like three, I think at least three of their albums. Let's double check. Let's go through. Oh, there's a little CD in the front here. And let's see where's the table of contents. Ah. Okay, there's um, lyrics from book and the EP that came out with it called Pamphlet. Also from the album I Like Fun and also from the album My Murdered Remains. So three albums worth of uh, They Might Be Giants uh, lyrics. But the thing about these lyrics is they're all illustrated creatively um, by an artist whose media is a IBM Selectric typewriter. Very interesting stuff. I don't know if the book is still available, but uh, go to uh, theymightbegiants.com, you might be able to get it. But um, for those of us who are They Might Be Giants collectors, very good. All right, <clears throat> as the techno music plays in the background, let's see. Anything else I want to show you? Eh, not much else. There's a Johnny Rivers mono live record that I'm going to listen to maybe later on today. Oh, mail call. I just got uh, three more uh, blue notes. Got this uh, Stanley Turrentine, rough and tumble. Got uh, six pieces of silver. Had this digitally for years. Love it. Or a silver quintet and Jackie McLean destination out just a little bit out by today's standards this is not free jazz so that's all I've got to show you right now um, thanks for watching thanks for subscribing um, hit the like please it always helps and um, I'll see you next time I got several more videos I want to make but um, I just got to get around to doing it Take care. Had a great time. Hope you did too. Go listen to some music.